Welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at creating a character controller for Sticker Lungu. It will be in third person, but you could use the same concepts and apply them to a first person character controller if you needed. If you have no clue who Sticker Lungu is, you can check out this video where we created the character and set him up with animations that we could then bring into Unity. Also, if you're just here for the code, hit those like and subscribe buttons and grab it. It's linked in the description down below. After bringing our FBX in, we have the animations that we chose from Mixamo and a couple more that I added in over time. But today we'll be working with the idle run and walk animations. So for now we'll just drag our character model up into our hierarchy. So just before trying to position him, I noticed this weird clipping that was going on in the scene view. And after consulting the oracle, it gave me this nifty little solution where you can hold the right mouse button and press W or S to increase or decrease the clipping plane in the scene view. So with that sorted, I just brought Stickalungo up a bit so that he was standing on the surface. We're going to start by creating an animator controller for our little dude. With him selected, we'll add an animator component. Go ahead and create a new animation controller. We'll name it something useful. Something I find helpful to do is to extract the animations out of the FBX. You can do this by highlighting the ones you want to extract and then holding control and pressing D. This will create duplicates of these animations. And then in the FBX, you can just go disable the animations so that when trying to select them in the controller, you won't see doubles. The reason I do this is so that if I want to add more animations at a later stage, I can simply bring in a new FBX, name it something different, extract the animations out of it, and then use those in the character controller. This way I won't have to replace the whole FBX that my character model is based on every time I want a new animation. We can then drag our animator controller into our animator components and open it up. We'll start by dragging in each of our animations and then we'll just rename each of them so that they're a bit more readable. With that done, we can start setting up our transitions. We'll want to transition from our idle state to our walk state, from our idle state to our run state, and from our walk state to our run state, and vice versa for each of them. To manage which state we're currently in, we can use two Boolean variables, one which determines when we're walking and another which determines when we're running. To use these parameters, we'll select one of the transition lines and add a condition which will cause the state to change from the current state to a new one based on the value of the parameter. In this case, we want to move from our idle state to our walking state when the walking parameter is set to true, and from our idle position to our run position if the running parameter is set to true. Well, I'm sure you get the point by now, so I won't show you each of these transitions. But a nice way to test it is if you set up your animated controller view next to your scene view, and when you press play, you can toggle the states to see if you're getting the desired results. Doing it this way means that you will have to consider certain things, like which state takes priority if both the walking and running parameters are set to true. So after fiddling for a bit, I have it set up in a way that prioritizes the run animation over most other animations. You might have noticed a slight delay between animation transitions. We can enable animation cancelling by unticking the has exit time checkboxes on each of the transitions. Now, the last thing we're going to want to set up before we start thinking about code is the position of our camera. We can drag our main camera into our player object and then reset its position. Another useful trick is to align our scene and game views side by side and then with the camera selected, modify its position so that we can see how it will affect the game view. Now that it's in a position we are happy with, we'll need to add two scripts, one to manage the player input and one to manage the player control. It's useful to separate the player input and player character control functionality from each other. This makes it much easier to maintain the code in future. For example, I will be using the good old input system for this video because I haven't quite learned the new input system yet. But I know that when I do, I can modify just this script without messing with any of the character control logic. Or if I had any friends, I could get them to work on one part whilst I work on the other and we wouldn't get in each other's way. In summary, to our player, we've added two scripts, one to manage the input and one to manage the character control. In our input handler, we'll create three constants. One represents the name of the vertical axis, one the horizontal, and one the name of the fire input. You can find these names and bindings by looking in the project settings input manager. Based on this, I can see that the fire three axis represents the left shift button on a keyboard. We'll then create two methods, which will return floats representing the current horizontal and vertical inputs. These will be values between negative one and one, which we can use to determine the direction our player wants to move the character. And one Boolean function, which will return true if the fire three input is larger than zero and false if not. We can use this to determine if the character is sprinting. Before we can actually use these input values, we're gonna need to add one more component to the player, that is a character controller. I've decided to use a character controller in this instance so that we can avoid the realistic nature that rigid bodies provide. I want Sticker Lungu to run on walls and fly and stuff. I've set up this character controller with pretty much the recommended values from the character controller page in the Unity docs. 
We'll set the slope limit to 90. The slope limit will make it so that the collider can only climb slopes that are less than this value. We'll set a step offset of 0.2 so that the character can only climb up steps of this height. We'll set a skin width of 0.02 which determines how the colliders will work with each other. If your character gets stuck, they recommend increasing this value or decreasing it accordingly. We'll set a minimum move distance of 0 and then the center, radius and height will align with the character's body shape. So now let's code our character controller. We'll make use of two constants to help us send value changes to our animator controller. We'll create a couple of fields to manage the max movement speed, how much sprinting affects our movement speed, how quickly our character turns, and an acceleration value. And we'll serialize all of these so that we can modify them in the editor. Next, we'll create some fields to get handles on the stick input handler, the animator, and the character controller. Then we'll add a field which will keep track of the player's current velocity, as well as fields to keep track of whether the player is walking or sprinting. In our start method, we'll get each of the required components and assign them accordingly. We'll need to create three functions, one to manage the current movement state of the player, one to actually move the player, and then one to update the animator. In the update movement states function, we'll use the input handler to check if the player is currently holding the sprint input as well as a vertical input. Based on this, we can set the walking and sprinting fields accordingly. With the state set, we can send these values to the animator by using the set bool function. In the move function, we'll check if the sprint button is being held. If so, we'll modify the speed based on the sprint speed modifier. We'll then do a check against the horizontal input to see if the player is turning left or right, and then we'll rotate them accordingly. Next, we'll get the vertical input to determine whether the player is moving forward or backwards, and we'll apply the required velocity based on that before finally calling the move function. And with that, we have a functioning character controller. You can go ahead and fiddle with the acceleration, max movement speed values, etc. and tweak them to your heart's content until you have a character controller that feels like what you need. I am working on combat and more advanced character control. I'll probably be releasing a video on that in the coming weeks. So subscribe and keep an eye on the channel. Anyway, that's that for this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.